you're welcome again to my channel as usual i'm excited that you could join i want to shed some light as an immigrant how you need to understand contracts you know if it could be work contracts it could be legal agreements it could be home agreements and some other agreements or legal contracts that you might be going into as an immigrant here in canada some things are same like home but some are different but it's just important that Coming to this diverse country, you need to understand how to go about it because getting into court cases and getting into legal actions are not far-fetched. So you want to be guided, you want to know your rights, and you want to know how to guard yourself. So if this sounds interesting, let's dive right into it. thing I would advise you to do is to seek professional help. There are legal practitioners that are always available to help that can understand those contract lines that seem so difficult for you to really interpret. Sometimes, especially when it comes to mortgage and even work contracts, some specific work, you need to understand those contracts. They will give you a long document. And I know I get it. Some of us don't really go through contracts. So we are buying our mobile phones. We are buying some things and those contracts are in fine lines. They don't want you to read it because they want you to get into one trap or the other. Take time to read through those fine lines. It's for your own safety. It's for your own benefit. So that at the end of the day, you don't get into trouble regretting why you didn't go through those fine lines or those agreements that is actually binding in the contract. So lawyers will help you interpret. They will be able to help you put into good context what those um, agreement lines are saying how what it means to you really if it's going to keep you within the boundaries of that agreement how it benefits you as new immigrants sometimes you don't understand so please seek professional help as one option one thing I also want to encourage you to do is that even by yourself when you go through this contract look at some particular elements of those contracts such as the parties involved your obligations your responsibility um, the contract expiration or some clauses that may actually be hidden somewhere in the contract it's for your good it's for your own benefit please go through it understand all those key elements because they won't be modeled up really but they'll be put in sections of the contract where you can see and read through it so Take some time and go through. Don't be in a hurry. Yes, you're excited about the new house. You're excited about the new car. You're excited about buying one or two things. But please save yourself the hassle at the end of the day to now go through those terms, those clauses, those termination clauses, those obligations, your rights, and the things that you need to know that binds you with the seller in that contract. Also try to understand the terminologies we call them jargons if we don't understand but they are terminologies based on the legal profession and you need to understand what they mean so when they put some terms that are too big for you to understand search them out you can always google you can always research you can speak to another lawyer or a professional partner or person that you know that understands these terms very well it's also for your good so that you don't feel um Sometimes these clauses might really not make any difference, but sometimes they might. And those simple clauses can actually change the game within the contract for you in the long term. So please pay keen attention to these terms. Don't just gloss over contract terms. Don't just read part of it and you know, just leave the rest. We are all guilty of this. But please, it's like for some particular things that are binding for years to come or you know, so many terms and months ahead, please take your time read through tell the person when you have to sign please give me a few minutes let me go through it highlight some of the terms and jargons that are there that you feel you don't understand and let them explain if they can't explain then you probably want to seek else somewhere else but they should be able to explain because they drafted the contract anyway so if there are things even in your work contract that you don't understand 
it's important that you let them understand. In some work contract, you might find some terms whereby you can't work for another employer within the same industry because of the kind of rules that you are engaged in. It could be some security rules within that firm. And it's okay, but if you don't read the contract and you leave that organization and you get a job in another one, three months down the line or six months down the line, then you're in trouble because that contract still binds you one year after. So please read those fine lines so you understand. And if you have to negotiate, I'm still going to come to that. If you have to negotiate the terms and tell them, hey, you can't keep me for one year without working for another employer that I desire. If I leave you guys, then you can probably negotiate the contract for about three months or six months. Depends on how you guys have, have haggle, you know, back and forth on those terms. You must also understand your rights and responsibilities in the agreement or in the terms of agreement. If you're renting, for instance, you must understand your own role as a tenant. And then the landlord understands their own role. Sometimes in the tenant's um, landlord agreement, the tenants have to do some particular things. Maybe mow the lawn or clear the grasses clear the snow is not in all cases that they have to contract out the clearing of the snow for the tenant depends on the kind of house or home that you eventually rent so it's important for you to understand that if you are not clear about anything please ask your landlord questions so you are clear they don't come down the way and say hey tenants you've not done this or you've actually left this out so you understand if your rent is meant to be paid on the 30th of the previous month Please pay it on that day. Some may say first of the following month. Understand the contracts, you know, all those things are binding because if you miss one day, there are penalties to it. That's interest charge. They always add money to money here. So it's interest charge and you don't want to be at the loss of anything because you actually forgot. And for those kind of contracts, I would advise you, you need to put, you know, a system in place whereby it gives you reminders on when to do stuff. So for me, all my alerts are on my calendar app on my phone. I also use my Notion app. I've said that numerous times. And that prompts me, right? It helps me keep track. So I give like a three days advance notice. This is the bill that we're meant to pay. Or this is the time we we're meant to pay this. It just prompts me ahead to be alert. So if it's an account that you have left that money needs to be deducted from and you don't regularly use the account as everyday inflow if you understand what i mean you want to move money there ahead of time so that you are not in shock when the money gets pulled and you don't have money there so three days really there's no way there's no way you have to go into your if you get used to it really there's no way in three days that i won't go into my um calendar app to check what you know happens there because really my itinerary is there also i put my my to do things there and i always know what to do per day so it's there for me i check all the things that i need to do so i will always see it so that prompts me and gives me that um, nudge to let me know that this is coming this is what you need to do and just makes it um, easy for you so if you also don't have money ready for them to pull out from your account you're going to be paying a fee because of course, you didn't have money in your account when they wanted to pull or you didn't have enough of the whole money that they're going to charge you or pull from your account. So please to put this in mind so you don't get um, you know, those issues with those contracts, especially landlord to tenant. I've mentioned that you need to understand the payment terms when you need to pay. You need to understand the penalties that accrue you know, when you delay in payments and all that, you know, really other financial obligations that need you to understand based on the contract so that you don't default in any of this. Please also pay particular attention to termination clauses. This is really, really important. Termination clauses when it comes to rentals or when it comes to your work contract. For rentals, they might say you're leasing this apartment for one year or six months. Really, most of the time it's about one year. So if you're renting for one year, this is the agreement for one year. They might have given you a reduction in cost because you're leasing for one year. And then at the turn of the one year, you probably have a new rate. If you don't pay attention and then by the turn of the year, you're still in the house. You now pay the regular rates where you're meant to have topped, off, topped it up with maybe additional $50 or whatever your contract says. Then you've paid short, you've breached the agreement. 
So please pay particular attention to those clauses in your contract and in your work contract. If you have a three months work contract um, or a six months work contract, or if you have a term that expires within a year, there are things that apply within that contract. So for instance, you won't get some work benefits. That means you might not be able to have some work benefits within the first three months, for instance, and then you start work and you're not asking that they've not, you, you don't have a health coverage or you don't have something that's related to work or benefits in that sense. And they're telling you your AD and D starts in three months, your deduction for your pension starts in three months. You know, all those, it's just like a waiting period for temporary workers. So you want to understand this work contract so that you actually understand exactly how things go. So you're not in shock as well. And then you don't feel as if you don't know what you're doing, you know, because it's 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 important you know what you're doing really um, in all these cases. Also very important is that you must keep your contract document. Please keep your contract documents, work contracts, house contracts, whatever contract that you have or that you have signed that you're in agreement with, please keep that document. I can't overstress. I'm sure every one of us have a Google account. I mean a Gmail account. So if you have a Gmail, you have a Google Drive, automatically it comes with the account. And this Google Drive is actually a storage space for you. So many of you or me in the past will be putting documents on your laptop and then when the thing become, becomes um, full or it just become, drags your computer slow and then shuts down on you, you lose everything. Use your Google Drive. Upload documents there, it's saved there, then you can buy drive space as much as you need, which is also cheaper than even having an external flash drive, if you ask me, because these external flash drives can also fall and everything wipes away. So I'm not saying don't have external, I also have external, but I make good use of my Google Drive. One thing your Google Drive also does for you is that it's mobile. Your phone goes everywhere with you, that's the fact. And then if you have to do stuff, like the other time I went to the bank, I wanted to open a business account and all my documents, incorporation documents were in my Google Drive. It was just easy for me to pull it out. Everything I want to do is in my Google Drive. It's just easy for me to pull it out. So it's just an easy thing for you. Upload all your documents in your Google Drive, put them in folders and you know, it's like in containers, we call them containers or folder spaces that is easy for you to access. And when you need to find it, it's easy for you to find. So use that opportunity to be able to save up. And then when there are updates or you have um, reviews on your contract, please re-categorize them on your, um, in your labeling and also upload into the same folder for that. So you have folders for your work, you have folders for your home, you have folders for your business, you have folders for your health, you have folders for your pay stop, you have folders for your grocery, you have folders for your insurance, you have folders for almost everything in your life. Please have folders for this. It helps and makes your life easier. It makes you more organized. It makes you, in fact, on top of your game. It just makes you like a superstar. And then you are on top of the things that you need to do. Right, so these are just a few tips I thought I should bring your way. But remember that legal documents are really complex. They are difficult to understand. So seek help if you must. If you can't read the fine lines, if you don't understand the jargons that are written there, please seek professional help. It will cost you a little money that will save you so much more in the near future. Thank you so much for watching. See you soon in another vlog. Bye.